the, some of the topics for today. Uh, the theme of the sum, summer solstice is harmonizing and aligning to the new cosmic orders, like I was kind of talking about um, earlier. And I was just saying also in the beginning that the summer solstice, as other uh, uh, ancient civilizations celebrated it, um, it's like a, a new solar year. They marked uh, the summer solstice as a beginning of a new solar year. So it's, um, I think, apropos um, that this is what's happening this year for this particular summer solstice, all the, the uh, codes and the law of structure, God's new mathematical laws are all activating um, to, so that we can co-create a new earth. Uh, there was a meta, me, mega meta dragon chakra and 13 dragons um, to replenish the earth's ley lines. And I'll uh, talk a bit about that in a chakra that we uh, activated. Yeah, flowering sacred geometry. You know, I'll talk a little bit about the Fibonacci sequence versus what is the uh, the crystal spiral that um, is uh, the organic form to connect with God's source and zero point at all times. You know, I think it's worth talking about uh, talking about this. Why, why is the Fibonacci what that we've been operating on? Why is that not really organic to uh, who we are? Um, Sammy flowering and embodying uh, as the basis of our work, you know, that we've been that we've been doing. And the solar system and cubes around the solar system that Sammy had me uh, draw and also cubes with these 13 zodiac signs and what that means for um, embodiment and uh, to be able to receive the support that we're sent with to live on this earth as a, as a human. Um, so in meditation, we'll be focusing on removing the flower of life, if that feels right to you, and activating the lotus of life based, that's based on the crystal, crystal spiral. Um, but let me take a moment here and talk about Sammy flowering and embodying as sort of the basis of our work. Um, because you know, if I look back now at everything that, you know, the information that I get and what I draw, um, it's all been around really, uh, you know, in a lot of ways, I just feel like a mom who's just been trying to get Sam uh, comfortable whenever she is um, like hitting herself or uh, just really out of alignment. And this is kind of how I figured out that what she needs, you know, because I was seeing images and seeing all kinds of things. And so then when I would start drawing it, she would uh, get a level of comfort. But, um, you know, even before we started all this, you know, back in 2013 and 14, um, you know, I would get all these uh, activations and I would get attunements from the cosmos. I would see, you know, goddess come down and uh, draw symbols into my hands or, you um, uh, the Council of Twelve of the Twelve Galactic Suns, you know, I received an attunement from them, and uh, or a dragon that would come down and draw symbols into my hand, and uh, so some of these things that I've been doing, I didn't realize was to prepare uh, to do the work that I've been doing with Sam for the last, um, particularly four years, and so, um, you know, I opened her Dragon Chakra in 2018, um, and she was barely functioning at that time, uh, hardly getting out of bed. Um, and I just had the sense that I need to open her dragon chakra. And it was one of those things that I just, I just did it, you know, cause I just somehow I knew how to do it. Um, and, uh, so that it was the attunements and, um, the activations that I had received where it just became natural. So when I say, um, really all this work has been to try and get Sammy comfortable and help Sammy embody. Um, and that's kind of the, the lesson that I realized here in the last couple of days. Uh, let me take a deep breath because I know it's kind of emotional <laughs> as I talk about this. Um, that it really has been all about trying to get Sammy comfortable here. And 
um, that's the lesson, I think, part of the lesson in what does it mean to live as a soul um, in a human form is that um, Sammy's bringing all these all, all this information in and um, uh, guiding me with all of this uh, for her embodiment so that she can feel comfortable here. But it translates to that it really is applicable for the planet and everybody else. And um, soul living is um, just that, that whatever we do for ourselves is in service to everyone else. Uh, and that's what, um, that's the basis of what 5D living is going to be about. You know, when we lived in an ego-based uh, consciousness, people did things to serve themselves. And it, it didn't matter if it hurt other people or a subgroup of people or hurt the animals or the environment, uh, so long as that person serve themselves and this is the difference in soul living and what it means to um serve yourself because it will naturally serve everybody else we won't do harm to the environment and i and obviously you know we have a few years here to get to that point but uh that's what it means to um that's what it means to live as a soul and that's what um, Sammy and these other autists, um, you know, have been doing. And I know there's um, many of them that have been doing like what Sammy is doing, you know, is doing with really leaving the core uh, functioning of their body to go way out uh, into the into the cosmos and the omniverse to make these connections back to the original source, back to original God source, back to the original zero point field uh, where um, uh, there is no form or anything, you know, it's just the, the, the pure potential of the God source just exists. Uh, and, um, you know, just uh, offering some, you know, empathy for all these other autists and their families and what um, they've all lived through as well. So, so anyway, um, so as I talk more about Sammy's embodiment uh, here, know that it, it has um, implications for, uh, for, for all of us. Um, and we're, we're laying the groundwork um, collectively to, to create the, the new 5D earth. So, um, so this is a mega meta dragon chakra or what I would call a primordial dragon chakra. Um, and uh, one of the energetic synthesis, I think two newsletters, two or three newsletters ago, she you know, talked about these 13 dragons that um, are coming online on the earth. Uh, and these, they, you have to imagine that these are dragon bodies and they're all like laying around the planet. So that there's 13 of them and they are affecting um, the ley lines of the planet. So what this mega meta dragon chakra is, is um, chakra, like it says here, it's, it implies that it's access into a field uh, through universal planes. So. I believe so. This was something that I had to. I was, I was guided to um, open uh, with Sam. Um, and like I said, was, again, it was one of those things where it just seemed like I just knew what to do, and I just kind of went through these universal planes, um, cleared, cleared areas uh, to access into um, not even a dimension, but a field of creation um, where these dragons are kind of emanating from. And so by having a chakra point, that means we stabilize these uh, 13 dragons. So you see 12 spheres and obviously then the mother, the center one is sort of like the mother and um, the 13th sphere, uh, the 13th dragon that kind of holds all the other dragons 
together. So um, it, interestingly, this morning when I was having vertigo and I needed to lay down for a while. And so uh, I could feel that this chakra was opening um, some more and there were multiple, multiple levels um, opening up and, you know, like seeing these uh, chakras like turning and spinning and kind of locking into place. And then like these different levels, you know, coming up um, into our realm, I guess, you know, so to speak. Uh, but one of the most kind of fascinating experiences in that was, I felt like I was experiencing God before any sort of creation or emanation, the field of the formlessness and the, the first breath that emanated out, we could say is, is like a dragon, you know, and we associate dragons with the, the fire and the breath that they breathe out. And so that's the analogy with God and the breath um, that it exhaled out. And uh, in this uh, field of uh, expressing itself, God source expressing ex itself, um, there was this sense of uh, ex incredible power, you know, just exploding out and uh, almost this awareness that, um, that, well, you can't create when this power just explodes out like that, that it, it's, uh, there's a destructive force to this um, creative kind of expression or this breath going out. And so um, it was almost like it had to learn to kind of regulate that or manage that in order to continue to create. And so uh, like a form is a way of containing all of that potential, you know? So it's like then the first sort of dragon form kind of um, emanated or uh, expressed. Uh, and then within this, I could feel this like masculine and feminine aspect. And it's not even, about the gender or the sex that we know, you know, that we express, but uh, kind of these forces of um, potential creation, you know, which is like the feminine mother uh, energy and um, or consciousness, and the father, that masculine of wanting to spread out, wanting to uh, exert itself out, um, and yet uh, that if it's if that exertion is not tamed you know, yeah, it can be just destructive. Uh, and so it's the, the, it just felt like this first balance of this feminine and masculine principle um, in order for God to express. And it made me think about what we have seen on the planet where, um, where the, if the masculine and feminine are not in balance, these aspects, then um, the over, uh, exertion of that aggressive masculine wants to destroy, wants to take, wants to control. And even the feminine, you know, we're witnessing um, this, what a distorted feminine, you know, could look like. I haven't really watched uh, the Johnny Depp trial, but I just heard bits and pieces from what people were talking about. But, um, you know, a distorted feminine principle expressing, uh, we could say that's at its most distorted and um, the ugliest expression of a distorted feminine that it could take, you know, um, which can also be abusive and uh, cruel and just manipulative. Uh, and so this is what sort of we're um, gonna be cor correcting. And I felt like experiencing this while I was uh, laid, laying down um, through these dragons, they're um, going to be bringing this, this original expression and meaning of masculine and feminine back, uh, you know, to the planet so that we can come into, um, into balance. So I thought it was a very interesting um, and really quite a beautiful experience as I'm laying there and just, you know, um, watching 
things happening. Um, and oh, and there was one point too when I had a vision of um, like a soldier in and a helmet, you know, uh, in like war gear, you know, uh, with a helmet on, ready for battle um, in the trenches. And um, he just looked like a stiff kind of, what would you call it, like a GI Joe figure, like a toy figure. And he was dissolving, um, almost uh, representing that, um, that warlike, aggressive, masculine, uh, being dissolved like this was like this was an archetype um, you know kind of that was planted that's also like kind of planted here um, that that has been influencing uh, the planetary consciousness and the hum the human consciousness so I think that will be um, you know kind of a, a big step and again you know going forward I don't know how this is all gonna um, play out you know in the world but um, certainly these yeah, things that are happening and what we're witnessing is, is just uh, really amazing. Somebody has a chat, somebody commented in the chat. Let me see. Um, let's see. Oh, thank you, Melina. Yeah. Yes, it is uh, very, um, can be very emotional raising these kids because, you know, it's, I know, Melina. And Marianne, I mean, it's it's uh, challenging, um, and uh, our hard knocks is uh, how we got to where we are today. <laughs> um, so this is an image of Sammy kind of flowering, and you know, I didn't quite understand, you know, over the last couple of years, but I would get these images of Sammy as a flower or like this butterfly flowering, and um, I would draw them. So this was one of them from uh, like January 2020 that I had drawn and notice how kind of cosmic, you know, it looks, it's in the stars, it's kind of galactic. Uh, and then recently uh, I was guided to draw some new ones. Uh, and this was just um, last week sometime, I think maybe just like 10 days ago, um, I saw this image, I kept seeing this, this flower in my in my head and I, th I think that's Sam flowering again so I started drawing the flower and then Sammy sent me an image um, and she wanted me to draw the flower in the background of a night scene and she said um, this is Sammy has landed you know uh, and again so before the images were very cosmic they were like in the stars the dry butterflies but they were like these cosmic scenes and now this is, this is a planet, you know, it's planet earth, it's the plants, it's nature here. Uh, and so I was like, wow, I think she's, you know, she's doing it, she's embodying somehow. Uh, uh, but this butterfly here, this is sort of a butterfly that I drew this over the spring. Um, and it's not a typical butterfly that you would see. So it says she's embodying, but it's not the same template. It's not the same butterfly that that we've known, uh, and you know here is the the egg of life, you know the the, the eight cells in our uh, eight fetal cells that's in our perineum, and this is the lotus of life. So, adding these elements. Oh, and this background here, this circular uh, image is from the seven higher heavens. It was like an emanation that came through a few, uh, like several weeks ago, and I drew it. Um, on another drawing and I you know you'll see it in some of my other images um, uh, and it's an emanation of the seven higher heavens kind of that says it's uh, they support this embodiment so and then Sammy had me I know, a couple of days later I was seeing this yellow flower you know um, and it's a you know it says another aspect of embodiment Sammy in the, the daylight. Oh, let me see if I can go back to the other one again, because uh, notice that this flower is a five petaled, right? five petaled, and then um, so this is five petals, uh, and then the one in the day is uh, six petaled, and this is what we see in uh, nature 
we'll see five petaled flowers, you'll see six petaled flowers, and uh, it's related to the, uh, the spiral um, as we manifest. So the five petaled spiral seems to indicate from Sam, and it's in the darkness at night scene because it's the, um, the geometry of uh, the, uh, the dark matter template and the light, when the light comes through the dark matter template that shines through is this uh, six petaled uh, flower. And uh, she sh shared this image with me um, in my, uh, sent it to me in my uh, mind and my, the back of my eyes were really buggy uh, seeing this, the, these um, purple petals. These are other butterflies that I had drawn in the past of her flowering. This is the, uh, the 12 cranial nerve activation. This is a flower from the seven higher heavens as support. Uh, this is the flower from, I think the 27th dimension, which brings coherence to our changing uh, sensory system. So, you know, there's these different elements that, that are in the, that are in the image. And um, uh, this is a, a tri-wave diva that's supporting uh, this embodiment. So again, so what she's doing for herself, um, you know, applies to uh, all of us and and humanity and and really all of life on the planet, all the all the living organisms and all the um, non-living, uh, what we would call non-living organisms like the crystals and because uh, the the sacred geometry underlying it all affects affects all of it. Um, so sacred geometry is the basis for manifestation. It is the blueprint or instructions, um, the mathematical instructions, right? The coming into form so that the light uh, can slow down enough so that it appears solid. So the, the statement that we are a light means that that's exactly what it is. It's the, the waves of uh, that light in density, it's just, it's just slower. It's just vibrating slower, slow enough so that we have this experience of being solid. Uh, and if you remember that we had talked about even the, um, the quantum field and the subatomic particles that they're changing and how quantum physicists kind of have this understanding that we're not even really solid. Nothing is really even solid. It's um, uh, these subatomic particles that are coming together and that appear solid or we ex experience um, solid kind of form for this experience. So, so then it's the mathematic and, and fractal formulas. That's part of God's language, uh, infinite language of calculus, you could say that dictates the manifestation. Uh, and the crystal spiral is like the emanation out of zero point. So we'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, this is a quick excerpt from the Ascension Glossary uh, about the, the difference between the Fibonacci and the, and the crystal spiral. So the Fibonacci, it's not that it's quote wrong, um, it's not organic to us, but it does describe the world that we have uh, lived in and um, the flower of life is based on um, the Fibonacci and a byway uh, system. So there's a lot more in this Ascension Glossary. Uh, I did a post in, with the link in uh, Patreon this afternoon. So if you get a chance to, to follow that link and you wanna read um, the full uh, description from the, this Ascension Glossary, then um, you can do that. So uh, the crystal star, uh, see, the Fibonacci doesn't start with zero, and that may not seem like a big deal, but that means uh, we're not accessing into zero point. Um, so the crystal star, or which is uh, more organic to us, which is the, ba the basis for the organic uh, avatar human, um, when we put that zero in, uh, the spiral um, is connected to zero point. 
So uh, by not being connected to zero point, it's like, it's an inverted system. And uh, it's why it's been difficult to clear our bodies because our, our bodies are manifest literally from uh, these uh, spirals, just like the flowers that we see in all of nature that we see, the, the Nautilus uh, shell, you know, that they use a lot. Um, the people talk about sacred geometry. Uh, so sacred geometry is important. So whatever you have learned before about sacred geometry, you know, the foundation is correct, you know, in the sense that everything is manifest out of sacred geometry, you know, it's the instruction set of how light and sound now really comes into, uh, into form. So I read the, uh, the Flower of Life books, the three books by, by Mel Dronavolo Melchizedek, um, probably about eight, nine years ago now, I was guided to, to read uh, the three books. Um, so, you know, I did, and he, he, his basis is on the Fibonacci. So I did, I did learn that and what the, uh, phi ratio is. The phi ratio is how the, uh, the, uh, the Fibonacci spiral, um, emanates, emanates out. But, um, you know, for me, the, the, the books, um, not all of it completely resonated for me, but it was, um, you know, it was, it was a learning lesson it was something that my uh, inner guidance wanted me to to understand so um if you've read uh Dumbledore McKeezadek's books and things you know it's not that it's wrong you can still take the foundation of the lessons there and carry it uh you know forward so um I was kind of shown this quick image of what uh sort of a simplified an analogy might be like so if this is zero point and the field of formlessness of God's source where everything emanates from, then uh, the, um, the organic true spiral uh, is always in alignment with zero point. And why is that important? It's important because we are, that means we're continuously, uh, our consciousness is continuously um, checking in with, let's say, God's source and um, omniversal laws, law of one, kind of organically, internally, we, under we understand that. And it would guide us to what to create and what not to create, you know, that uh, we wouldn't want to create something that's going to harm something else, you know, in our, in our ecosystem, that uh, it has detrimental effects on all of us, you know, so we would understand that. Whereas the Fibonacci, since it's not really anchored to zero point, and as it has gone on, then it's diverging from uh, that original zero point consciousness of God's source. And this is how we get distorted and fallen consciousness. And the further and further we get out away from uh, the organic spiral, the crystal spiral, then um, we, we create more distortions in the world. We're, you know, easily manipulated by um, others. We can't just, we have a hard time discerning of what, what is true. We um, create a miscreation, so to speak, that uh, pollutes the earth. And, um, well, you get it. It, it causes, it has caused more and more distortions. And so the further that we've gone out, uh, the, the less connected we have been to uh, God's source organically. So this is what is um, underway. So does somebody else have a, um, somebody else have a chat? Oh, come on. So yeah, somebody else said, um, I read all of his books. Yeah. So again, the foundation of it is, um, you know, is correct. You know, and again, uh, leave it to each of you to what, as to what feels right to you. You know, we all have to discern based on um, what feels right to each of us, you know. And I know there's somebody else out there who has presented a different 
spiral and a different mathematic. Um, and I, I saw his, uh, some of his videos a few years ago because a friend had sent it to me and um, I did some of the energy work and uh, it, was, uh, it was another Melchizedek, he called himself another, I think it's, it was Christoph Melchizedek, I think. Um, and, you know, it just didn't resonate for me. It, the spiral, it did not feel, it did not feel right. And um, the, the meditation that I had done, um, I had to undo that, that the energy work that was, uh, that, uh, um, that took place in my body, uh, I had to undo it. So, you know, and again, that's for me, each person, you know, discerns what is right for them, what feels right for them. And uh, it can be a confusing time right now because there's a lot of similar language being used um, when they talk about oneness and being God. And uh, so anyway, there's a lot of um, in information out there and there's a lot of misinformation, but uh, you know, um, each, each one of you has, it has the ability to discern. So I trust that you know um, what is true for you. Uh, so looking at uh, Da Vinci, right? Um, this is the five-pointed star, just like the five-pointed flower that Sammy was uh, presenting, showing um, that this shows the proportions of the human body. And again, this is based on the, um, the phi ratio but um, you know the, the underlying basis is you know is correct. There is a kind of this five pointed star uh, that uh, is important um, in our manifestation. Um, and Sammy's saying right now, and and um, the soul expression through our through our body, the five pointed star is a, is very key. And if you have, may have seen the satanic star, which is inverted. Um, you'll see it inverted. I don't want to get a picture of it and, and post it here, but um, the satanic five-pointed star is with these two points above and this top point points down. And that it represents the inversion, the anti-life. And you'll see um, like a satanic kind of, uh, looks like a goat or of some sort where the two horns are uh, here you know, as the five-pointed star. So that's the anti-life force um, uh, inverted pentagram that is, uh, that is satanic. So uh, just an FYI, some of you may already be, you know, aware of that. Uh, and, you know, unfortunately, we kind of see it around more where there are kids, um, young people practicing Satanism with the uh, inverted five-pointed star, and they don't realize that it's really anti-life, um, and will take them down a, a different road, so to speak. So let's see, next slide. Okay, so this is, you know, I, I shared it um, on the Patreon page. This is the supra mega galactic core chakra, and if you read the other post that I did about the black sun, um, in order to, and again, this is, some of this information is from um, energetic synthesis because uh, um, it feels right to me, but um, there's been a black sun um, because you have to connect to something in the universe in order to, to stabilize, let's say this false matrix or this phantom matrix, there has to be something, some anchor point. And so this black sun has been operating um, to manifest and hold the, this, it, this inverted kind of ge uh, sacred geometry and anti-life forces. It also has been, been taking energy, life force energy from, uh, you know, the humans. And, you know, it's amazing that we function as well as we do because by siphoning our energy um, and feeding off human fears and all the, the quote, lower consciousness emotions, um, that's what's been feeding kind of the black sun. And, um, you know, my understanding is that it's also this black sun consciousness that um, sucked in the Metatron's cube and that group 
in order to support the um, anti-life satanic and luciferian you know agenda and again you know this is kind of um uh, if that makes sense to you so anyway um this super mega galactic core chakra is the multi our our galactic core access um into the uh universal or omniversal plane of the all that is and so um as we disconnect from the black sun then we have to connect to something else to stay to remain stable so that's what this uh represents and you'll see the series of cubes um, within cubes that represents the uh the multi-dimensional or multi multiversal kind of connection that um our galactic core has so if that makes sense so this is you know we'll obviously be including all of this in the energy work as you know, sharing the images so this will sort of be the basis of um uh, of a lot of this uh, let's go to the next one uh the blossoming earth this is how sammy uh showed it to me represents that the earth is also um uh, blooming with these new codes and uh, she had me draw this cube for the moon because uh, if the moon um, is, if there's a lot of moon bases that are um, emanating out signals, false light signals, then, and if it's, if it's an inorganic to the earth kind of uh, satellite, um, then somehow the moon's energy, this moon's energy needs to be kind of transmuted, nullified, uh, dissolved and deleted. So uh, that's what this moon cube um, represents. So some of the other cubes, this is our, our solar system that Sammy had me draw. <laughs> um, because again, part of her embodiment is, uh, so she seems to be anchoring her light body part of it um, in different stages and uh, to the solar system uh, as well, the vastness of her light body. Um, so, so she had me do all these cubes for each of the planets. You know, as you'll see, I'll show you an image of one that's closer. And we go all the way out to the Oort cloud, you know, and again, this is not to scale. I don't know if way out there, if this is what it would all look like. Also the Kuiper belt, which is, you know, and I think it's wider than this. The asteroid belt, um, Eridanus. Uh, I haven't done Chiron yet, but I think Chiron is important to do a cube for as well. So here's the earth um, with its blooming uh, flower and the sun in, um, it's the hypercube, the, the tesseract indicating that again, for this, new solar year and this summer solstice, the sun and our entire solar system, it's, it's saying that we're aligning to the cosmic order um, and back to the uh, organic source of, of the all that is. So that's what this represents. Um, oh, and this planet out here, this, this planet X, I think there's something else out here, but there's something, there's um, an, there's some some sort of false god matrix that's out here uh, that I was shown that's emanating false light. Basically, false light is all I can is the only way I can say it. So, this cube is to um, dissolve to dissolve that as well. So here is a, a close up look um, at those those cubes. So each one, um, and you'll see some of them, like Jupiter has these three other circles on it. Uh, she had me connect to the, the moons of uh, Io, Callisto, and Ganymede, um, and also Mars. Uh, this little circle represents uh, Phoebos, 
uh, Mars's moon. And not, not with all the planets, but some of those she had me, that's what she had me do. Um, so like Pluto is uh, Sharon, Pluto's moon. I guess it's really both of them that are operating um, together. And planet, here's the sphere, the cube for planet X that's out there. Uh, the Oort cloud, uh, this was an interesting drawing with all these, uh, all these eyes that uh, as, as we get comets that pass around our solar system now, um, it will be, we'll be going through a series of uh, DNA, other gene kind of activations. Uh, these, these eyes represent the eyes of Melchizedek. Um, the Melchizedek is, from what I understand, is a generic term meaning that the, it holds um, the uh, gene, uh, the gene genetic records. And so uh, different Melchizedeks will be holding different kinds of uh, gene activations. Um, so, and again, you know, some people will call themselves a Melchizedek, you know, I, I think you have to really be, um, you have to um, discern um, just because they say who they are, you know, I kind of go by um, the, the work, you know, that they do and the image that they are uh, portraying um, to discern the level of information that I'm getting from them. So um, anyway, so that's why I don't like to say like, oh, this is who I am, this is where I'm from. And I'm, you know, uh, it's like, well, we'll let the work just speak for itself, you know, kind of thing. Um, so this is the uh, the thirteen zodiac constellations. So Sammy, you know, had me do that, and the constellations are based on our perspective of the Earth. You know, somebody um, that I listened to a few years ago made a good point that if you were out in the out on the moon or even in orbit, these constellations would look like that. It's only from the perspective of the Earth. Um, and the way we have to understand the constellations and why the consciousness that they emanate works is because they're literally emanations that are coming coming through. They're conscious, um, and it's it's like how the omniverse is pointing um, rays of consciousness through the stars. What we see uh, as the stars behind it, you know, there's a series of also manifestation. Uh, pre-manifestation levels or emanation levels of emanation that it's coming coming from and so that's the way I uh, kind of look at it so these constellations um, the 13 zodiac signs is like cosmic support is what Sam is saying they're their cosmic support and the planet the planets in our solar system it's much more physical. It's like physical support. So whereas uh, the astrology um, that we've learned, you know, is um, that it uh, your birth sign will kind of dictate who you are and what your what your tendencies are. And I think that's true to a certain extent. Uh, and the planetary influences on our lives. Uh, it just feels like this it, this will go through it is going through a change as well that the um, like I said the planets um, is is like real physical support here while we're in physical bodies and the constellations will be like um, cosmic support um, now even the other constellations I'm drawing even other cubes around the other constellations now like um, Ursa Major and Pegasus. So those also have kind of influences on, on us as well. Um, but yeah, that's probably for a different other time. So uh, this is again what we've been kind of working on. Uh, an analogy of our genes. And again, this, you know, this is not how our uh, uh, DNA ladder, obviously what it looks like, but I was guided that it's uh, kind of drawn in this flower pattern to get this uh, sense that we do also, we are, the physical body manifesting 
and our genes activating is like a flower literally blooming, just like with Sammy um, describing herself as uh, showing me images of her as she's blooming. Um, so uh, the God's mathematical laws, um, it dictates and guides how the genes um, activate and uh, it also is activating you know, our unique soul blueprint. And um, that's what the, these autists are bringing forward to us, that consciousness that, um, you know, everyone is unique. Each one of these autists, they, ha they have a unique sensory system. You know, we can kind of just make a general description, but each of them also have a unique uh, sensory system and unique attributes and so they defy the educational system because it's not an all, all um, you know you can't apply one teaching method to all of them you know they're all they're all different um, so this is kind of what what that they're bringing that consciousness that each each one of us, them is unique and each one of us as a human is unique and we're designed to contribute to humanity, to the planet, to one another based on our uh, unique genetic template. And I guess some of you, a lot of you probably already know that even crystals um, follow a geometric pattern and they grow almost like a flower and they bloom um, and they go through, they go through changes uh, like a flower as well. So, you know, it's all very fascinating. And so the animals are undergoing changes, um, the plants and the insect life, the microbial life, the uh, mycelium, you know, the, the, the mushroom, all of it is undergoing um, lots and lots of changes uh, at, um, all, all together. And the mycelium that we're, that one is really significant, I feel like, because that one particularly feels like if mushrooms are the in-between state of living and non-living uh, states of matter, and they are connect, they connect plant life together, their communication networks, um, they're like a nervous system, I've heard it described that way, uh, for the planet, and their upgrade, it feels like will really facilitate the cleaning, the cleanup of the planet, so which is uh, very, very significant. Thank you, uh, Melina. So she says, I had a dream. All your drawings are emanations of divine light energy. Precious, I had a dream with yellow and purple flowers similar to Sammy's daylight flowers. Oh, that's great. Yeah, see, so it doesn't, you know, what uh, they do for themselves, they are doing for, for everyone. So yeah, that's beautiful, Melina, thank you. So does anybody else? Um, have any comments or uh, questions? Uh, this is the last slide for presentation. So um, then I'll be going into the meditation slides and um, just the images real quick. Anybody else have anything else to add that they wanna add or ask? Okay. So meditation intention and again if it doesn't this doesn't feel right to you right now then you can bypass it and do it at another time um, i'm gonna clear and delete the inorganic false matrix pattern and again i have faith and honor each of your uh, the discernment that each of you carry so thank you so much until next month <laughs>